so we'll be starting the discussion i'll be sharing my screen um and at any point of time you have questions please put it in the chat or in the q and a section and we'll take it up every 5 to 7 minutes we'll stop and take up the questions okay so uh, jaysh let's start uh, i'll share my screen and meanwhile jaysh i think you had a interesting question for all the people around here so you can share that up. yes so uh, what i'll do is uh, i'll ask the question and then i'll put it in the chat itself so hi guys this is jaysh again a quick round of introduction who joined a little late uh, i am the director of customer experience and with me i have tanuj divan who's the co-founder for service sensor so uh, a quick question for all of you and uh, would request you all to please put down your answers in the chat so the question here is that apart from your own company which do you, what company do you feel has the best cx apart from yours right so i'll put down the question in the chat itself and it will be really helpful if you can just put down your uh, answers here in the chat itself thank you so i'll, I'll start with mine so i've worked with two uh, two companies i feel which give the best cx one is hubspot it's a crm and another is stripe uh, which is a, a a payment gateway so that's mine nikhil says starbucks yeah nikhil for sure i agree with you as well how about you jayesh what do you feel so i've worked with a couple of companies closely right so if if i talk about someone who has grown and uh, have actually implemented a lot of things so i would say uh, bharti axa if people know uh, they have a pretty uh, you know intense measures in terms of calculating cx secondly uh, if i say so uh, you know there are a couple of retail companies who actually come down in terms of doing that pretty well so one is tata click right so if you've uh, seen their process if you've seen their uh, you know uh, touch points and understanding of how exactly they want to map the customer that is something pretty great okay so people are saying american express so they also mentioned in Sur surya said oracle i've tried american Ex express but i've never tried oracle before but i've heard a lot about them so i personally had a a, a little bit uh, you know not so good experience with american express the rest <laughs> things were fine but yeah <laughs> that's okay uh, so okay so let's start the conversation now uh, so guys sure. uh, today we'll be discussing about what uh, the state of customer experience in india so we have learning from around 180 cs leaders across india from different industries we we did a survey and asked them the some questions that how, how do they feel cx is growing within the organization and what are the things they are doing and what are the things they are still facing some challenges on in which they want to take the CX to the next level. So uh, before I start, there is a one question that I have that I would like every one of you to answer in the chat itself again. So who do you think, um, looking at your own company's board seat, who do you think is missing here? So, so you can put your answers on... here in the chat, guys. Yeah. Uh... So there is a CMO, there is a CSO, Customer, yeah, that's a good answer. CXO, uh, very good answer again. Got a, yeah. CTO. Did we miss CTO, CTO? I I can see CTO. CTO is yeah, yeah. The third chair is the CTO. Yeah, but CXO and the customer for sure is missing. So we Absolutely. what we are going to talk about uh, today is uh, the CXO. Um, mostly, uh, the, there is no customer experience officer generally in the companies in the both seat. Uh, you guys are right, there are a lot of other things as well, as well missing. And this is one chair we feel that is still empty. And uh, uh, Minu, want... mm -hmm. Minu mentioned CPEO. Yes, uh, you're correct. Like chief people experience officer. That's yeah. also missing over here. Agreed. Yeah, and chief experience officer. Yeah, so uh, these are the two. Uh, people that are missing for sure so we want to figure out like uh, why we did the service we wanted to figure out why there are empty seats in the organization for a cxo or a chief experience officer so and how you as a cx professional can come closer to that board seat uh, so in this study we will have a look at what are the most of the cx people in india are doing 
uh, what are the challenges they are facing and what are the next steps they need to do to get closer to the uh, board seat so this will be the agenda of our uh, discussion today so let's begin so these are the uh, four things that we'll discuss state of currency x programs then best practices and use cases from them and what are the key actionables that we can take so uh, just a very small background and we won't talk much about it what are we we are a customer feedback experience management platform we help people in measuring real time nps csat across journeys uh, we specifically have some cx experts to help you run the cx program effectively so that you don't feel you are alone and then because we have cx experts they help you drive the cx roi and help you save cost which actually the ceos need and get you closer to the board seat these are some of our customers but i'll move forward uh, so this study, uh, the survey that was done was covered across India, uh, around 180 people from banking, automotive, insurance, telecommunication, and other industries. Most of them were uh, like senior people, senior managers in the CX domain, VPs and directors, CSUs, which are few, but we asked them these surveys. And also then, uh, if you talk about the employee size, most of the companies were bigger in size, a thousand plus. So, um, so let's begin uh, with what, what is the state of current CX program. So uh, just a quick question, uh, a poll, uh, Jayesh, if you could launch it. I want to ask from yeah. you, if you uh, look at this year and compare it to the next year, how much do you feel your organization is now pushing towards these four metrics? And what is the metric which they are focusing more on? Is it product experience, a customer experience, a marketing or employee? Where do you think your company is more focused on? And you can have multiple answers, guys, for this question. Okay, so we'll end the poll. And would you like to share the results as well? Yes. Yeah. So if you look at it, there is slightly uh, a different numbers to what we got in the survey, but that's okay. Uh, so CX for sure, definitely as compared to last year, people are like focusing more on and uh, product experience is something where every time people have focused on. And if you look at the numbers uh, for the employee experience, which you have mentioned and also what we'll see in the next slide is something which we still feel is missing. And that is what uh, making the CX journey a little bit slow as well. Because if our customers, uh, our employees are not happy, then there is slightly difficult way to enhance the customer experience. So I see there is a, a comment uh, from someone that adoption in India feels a bit slow compared to the rest of the world, but it gained momentum during the COVID era. You're absolutely right about it. So we'll talk more about this in this session now. So let's move uh, to what the actual numbers came in when we did the, uh, with the 180 people. So people also mentioned about the product experience. This is from the higher CXO levels. They mentioned that a lot of people focus about it. Customer experience is something that everyone does. Uh, as compared to last year, it, it is much more now. And But the only thing which we also saw in your results and also uh, which we see in this survey is employee experience is still far, far away from what we expect it, if the employee experience goes very similar to how the customer experience is growing the cx will even grow further so i'll take an example for example uh, we do a lot of cx based surveys we do a lot of cx based research but rarely i think i have seen uh, people do employee based surveys that much either they are done once Correct. in a year or either they are done twice in one year even bigger companies that i've worked with employee experience is something not taken that seriously and if we talk about we for customer we would do a qualitative research a quantitative mm. research, but rarely we do that with the employees yeah so the general ratio if you'll see if there are 10 companies who are actually uh, measuring you know customer experience so there'll be one you know 1.5 companies who are actually doing employee experience parallel to it so that 360 view in terms of the company growth is actually required as well exactly right so that that is what we've seen over here yeah so that is one thing. So uh, what we uh, did, we divided the, uh, once we got the results from the survey, we divided the survey into three stages. One is a passive stage, reactive stage, and a proactive stage for CX maturity, like how mature are our organizations. 
so uh, in, in when it comes to passive stage pa in the passive stage the measurement is mostly need based or ad hoc based for example you're measuring nps you just do it once a year there's no particular time to it when you're going to do it and uh, you just did it once and you are fo you forgot about it then the analysis of that stage is mostly manual people uh, sometimes are using agencies or maybe google forms to do those kind of analysis which is not in real time you get the survey you're waiting for results and then you'll take action and if when it comes to action taking because it is not uh, in a proactive way or an active way you are not doing close the loop with everyone you are just looking at the results and overall level either taking no action whatsoever or taking some actions but on the aggregate level so this is called a passive stage of cx majority now when it comes to reactive stage um, people start measuring um, feedback on a regular basis at every touch point in the journey be it after sales be it uh, after service be it after support call or even after onboarding people are measuring service and that to in an integrated way meaning it's uh, going online and automatic then uh, the dashboarding in that part is also automatic because most of the things are integrated surveys are live in real time then people are uh, taking action by closing the loop with a dissatisfied customer so there is a service recovery team who is calling the customer who has given a negative feedback so this is kind of a reactive stage uh, where most of the cx programs are in and if i talk about the proactive stage is something which like i and jayesh were just talking that there is 360 degree feedback so it's not just about uh, customer uh, it's also about employee and on customer it's not just about replying on social media uh, and other channels but it is also about seeing across the channels what are the uh, feedback that we are getting and then also asking employees whether they relay with that feedback that is coming in and then we take actions on it so there the insights are more integrated uh, the text analysis is used the ai based looking at social media chat uh, your chatbot conversations your phone conversations everything is coming into one uh, place and uh, analysis is done so that you know what are the things that we need to improve on then there are also some companies doing future behavior prediction looking at the behavioral data of the customers and doing future uh, behavior that whether they are going to buy it or they are not going to uh, buy it um, then uh, there is they are also able to calculate the cx roi that if we do this percent change then this percent of revenue is going to increase uh, then the other thing that happens is um, because they are able to see those analysis then they are able to personalize the experiences a bit more they are able to proactively close the loop because they can predict churn that these these are the customers that might churn in the future we can proactively reach out to them solve their problem so that this does not happen so this is the three stages that we have uh, sujay uh, i'll take your question in a bit um, just i have one question before um, we move to the question which sujay asked which stage do you think india falls in when it comes to cx maturity so you can have a look at this uh, jayesh you can open the poll and yep. okay people still feel other other people can also answer we we'll just keep it for like a few more seconds okay so we'll end the poll so jayesh would you like to share the results sure yeah so there are a lot of people uh, on a similar front think that it's passive reactive there's someone who said proactive as well yeah a few very few people say proactive and most of the people still yeah. feel we are in passive uh, stage passive and reactive right? stage so that yes, means yes. that that's something that is happening um mm. we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it where india is so close one tie between passive and reactive yeah you are right bunjan yeah absolutely bunjan yeah so if 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 i go back sujay to your question i would like to understand from you just one thing um what do you mean by uh, dsat and then in the bracket you have mentioned acpt can you can you talk to me about it is it about dissatisfied customer you can just put it in the chat as well 
yeah, yeah so if i talk about dissatisfied customer so what it can happen so let's suppose if someone gives a, a negative feedback in a survey or an nps or a csat survey after transaction uh, you you can have tools so one of them is service and some but there are many others as well where as soon as a negative feedback comes in a ticket gets opened and automatically gets assigned to the service recovery team and uh, service recovery team then calls the customer put in the notes and put in the category that how uh, what happened during the call when they closed the loop that's one way of doing it the other way is like retail companies uh, who use us what they do they have uh, store managers area manager regional manager similar to banking branch manager cluster manager and regional manager as soon as some negative feedback comes in uh, area slash cluster manager gets that notification right away they are the ones who actually call the customer and close the loop with them so that no so what we have done we have created a tool where uh, there are role based dashboards where you with the hierarchy a branch manager or area manager and everyone is getting their own dashboards and also getting the tickets or alerts when there is a negative feedback so we can take this up sujay uh, later as well um, will definitely i'll reach out to you over linkedin and just talk more about it that how it can be done but this is the way people are now doing it okay so if i uh, uh, we look at it that most of the cx programs are kind of like in reactive stage some of them are still in passive like you guys answered so uh, the activities which are done in the cx program is this this when it comes to passive stage that you are doing periodic npa service for example once in a year uh, or annual one time service or sometimes you are doing ad hoc journey based service like okay let me measure my onboarding so that is kind of like in a passive stage in the reactive stage is uh, journey level feedback measurement which like around 60 65 69 people mentioned that they have started doing it for the people who are doing journey level measurement they mentioned that uh, they are, they have started doing close the loop as well um, but only things that i still uh, worry about it when we ask them do you know why your customer churn or when do they drop off they don't have an answer to it so some things which are still missing in the reactive stage is this and when it comes to the proactive stage where very very few companies are doing it are they have a centralized text analysis engine where they are looking at uh, survey data they are looking at uh, the social media data the chat data the call center data and everything and combining into one voc platform which tells them uh, what are the things going on everywhere not just in the survey only few 19% of the people said or they claim that they are able to measure roi of cx and 11% of them said they are able to do predictive analysis these the people who are doing predictive analysis i have seen mostly are uh, uh, tech startups uh, which have grown a lot uh, now no, we we can't call them a startup anymore i've i've heard zomato swiggy and things like this have spoken to them them people who have been doing these kind of analysis but we are still far far away from that stage and if i talk about uh, india um it is somewhere between reactive and proactive uh, maybe some of them you you will see that it might be in passive and reactive so it's kind of like a close competition that way so cause some of the people are doing predictive analysis and things like this uh, but they are mostly tech startups which i talked about but uh, at least they have started leading the way so i remember when it was like uh, in 2018 uh, or around 17 when we launched our product everyone wanted to ask okay can i know what is my nps score uh, can i know uh, how i am comparing against my uh, brands like competition so they wanted to do nps benchmarking now a few days back i was having a conversation where the person was saying okay i want to uh, tanuj you have a good text analysis engine for surveys can you also do it on my chat uh, can you also do it on my call center conversations so the questions that people have are asking now have also changed as compared to what they were before so i think uh, we are still slow uh, but we are still moving towards in the right direction so apart from uh, usa uh, if any company is starting or putting a lot of pressure on cx is india is one of them along with germany and uk so now if i uh, we talk about what are the reasons we are still far away from the proactive stage so people mentioned that there are some challenges uh, that they are facing uh, so this is something we are going to talk about meanwhile if anyone has 
any questions please let us know uh, in the chat i think is there a something yeah. in the q and a Jayesh? yes uh, so shivanshu asked marketers are facing a challenge customers especially influencers are leaving negative reviews to leverage the extra budget assigned for review management mm -hmm. uh, there is an increased bias towards negative feedback as such customers get more attention how can we manage authenticity of feedback platforms so if i see if you talk about influencers shivanshu i don't think anyone can control that part um sometimes influencers are also the ones who are getting paid from other uh, me like other brands or something like this that can also happen or it is mostly their personal opinion but yeah of course influencers people follow influencers as well but there is also one more thing that people do apart from influencers they also look at your online reviews which like you mentioned now i've seen i uh, yesterday i was talking to someone in the us so they are a uh, medical company medical supplier of equipments and they also have like their clinics so we saw their reviews and ratings they were around 1.3 out of 5 um, mostly yeah gunjan you are right about it so they had 1.5 ratings 1.9 ratings so what we saw that everyone is just giving a negative feedback there cuz putting something on a google review is still an effort from our side if we see something negative we put it there same on twitter and things like this but what companies currently lack, Shivanshu, to your question is creating a program where we are asking people to rate us as well when they are coming to our clinics or restaurants. So I have seen people, I'm sure you must have seen as well, when you go to some of the brands in a retail shop, as soon as you, uh, like a retail or a, uh, for example, a, a food shop, you go to a food restaurant, you uh, have food, they ask you in the end, Sir, are you happy with our food? What did you like? Things like this. And then suddenly they'll ask you, uh, can you please review us here on Zomato? Just right in there and then. So if you're asking customers to review us right there and then, at least five or seven out of 100 will at least give you a rating. So that is something which not everyone is doing apart from the restaurant industry. So if you are not asking for reviews, then how you're going to get positive reviews? And if you have more positive reviews, then the influencer bias will still slightly go away. What's your take on it, Jesh? So, see, that's, that's absolutely correct, uh, Tanuj, what you said. Because we have to make the feedback more real-time, right? Th that, that process should be, you know, prioritized in terms of just rather taking a feedback. Because what I've seen is there are a lot of uh, organizations, what they do is they trigger a feedback that depends on how exactly or what exactly the feedback is for example if i say in hospitals right in an opd department you can take a immediate feedback of a person who's just you know leaving the hospital yeah. but in an ipd department you can't take an immediate feedback because they might be going through recovery but right. in terms of a retail or a restaurant or those kind of aspects where someone has entered my shop right i can very well take a feedback while them exiting where i can see they've shopped exactly right there can be tabs there can be multiple things you know, I, if, if I don't want to influence the feedback while triggering there, there might be a possibility. I have QR codes. I have pods where exactly they can go and give the feedback live itself. Correct. Right? So automatically the store manager or whosoever is the person responsible for taking care of it are getting live feedbacks then and there. And I think there's one more thing that people can do. Let's suppose they receive a feedback and they give some positive rating on the survey itself. Uh, so we generally try to close the loop with only the customers who are giving a negative feedback, right? If, if how about we just asked a positive person to uh, give us a review somewhere, right? Absolutely. We have done it a lot of time. Like how we got our Gartner reviews is once people are happy, we just ask them, can you please rate us here? It will help mm -hmm. other customers like you to uh, choose us uh, as a company, right? And in B2B, if they, that can happen, I still feel that in B2C that can happen as well very easily. So yeah, correct. So just to give you an example, mm -hmm. there, there's a small, uh, you know, food outlet nearby where I stay. So okay. whenever you go there, right, so the owner themselves, what they do is if you're having the food, they come to you, they ask you and they, uh, you know, create a small video. And what they have is they have televisions there inside the shop itself where exactly your reviews are continuously playing. Achha. Hmm. That's a nice Right. Video. So, hmm. yeah, so this is a live kind of a feedback where exactly, um, you know, wherever you go there, you see obviously it's sometimes uh i would say you know 
uh, very odd to see you on the television screen. But if there are multiple people, you know, who see there, because it's a local place over here, there are a lot of people who see you and they know you. Yeah. Right. Uh, so automatically, um, you know, it's an influence where exactly you can uh, push these kind of things as well. Correct. And I think like what, what Surya, you mentioned, um, I, I still feel that I, if it, it's personal opinion, I definitely look at reviews. Within the reviews, I'll reach each and every comment. Even I'll read the negative ones. I'll read the second star, three star when you talk about Amazon. And I also read the five star before deciding what I want to do. So I think there is difference of opinion in there, nothing else. But yeah, of course, the research needs to be done. But reviews, people check as well. And online reputation is something that that's how you can control. So let's move on. Uh, so what we realize why people are like still... Uh, CX people are struggling to move to the proactive stage and getting a seat, uh, a seat in actually the board is because they do they lack quality customer data with them. So we ask them that how many of you feel that data is uh, uh, an obstacle and around 50% people said that definitely it's an obstacle. The other thing that people mention uh, within that when we ask them, okay, if the data is not available, uh, what, what is happening? Why you feel that data is not available and what kind of data is not available? So the most important part that people mentioned was they do not have an ideal customer profile. Now think about it. If you look at your own company or uh, look at any others where you have worked before, um, ideal co com customer profile is unknown with most of the companies. Everyone has done segmentation based on uh, how much pe people are spending. So they have gold segment, platinum segment, silver segment. But you, if you ask any of your own within your own company that how can you move a gold segment to a platinum or a silver to a gold, they won't be able to give you an answer. Reason being, if you do not know what is exactly your ideal customer profile, that what are the behaviors, what are the demographics, who is the person who actually is the first preference of my company, that these are the people I should sell to then you would not be able to ever take the CX to the next level. So uh, what I have seen uh, within like uh, the people that I work with uh, that they have, they, they say that they claim that they have the customer profile and some of them even have done segmentation studies that this is my ideal segment, priority one, priority two, priority three. But when it comes to a potential customer or a lead, if you want to pitch to them, how to pitch to them, they do not know whether the person who's coming to my store or the person who's visiting my website is that person my right profile so now what what kind of loss that people have with this let's suppose you're working in a, a telecom company or a bank you have 10000 people giving you a negative feedback and they're giving you 60 70 different suggestions so now it's difficult for a company to prioritize okay what are the things that we need to work on so you're not actually thinking about the customer as such so then what, what happens, you go to your management and ask, okay, we have these three, four options where we want to improve. And now on their gut, they are going to choose which they have to fix. So that is why we struggle in taking to the next level. So customer profiling and putting that data in the CRM is one of the most important things that we should do. The other thing we feel which is missing and people also mentioned that they do not have churn numbers. They don't know how many people are churning and if they know, they don't know why they are churning because there's no such kind of like a survey or an effort done to understand why your customer churned. So this is one of the uh, major problems we have seen in personalization, uh, why we are lacking personalization in the era of YouTubes and Spotify and all, but we are still lacking. So I'll give another example of uh, personalization. I'm sure this is a familiar situation to every one of you. We keep on receiving, even though, um, like, Jayesh, if, have you ever seen a bank calling you for, okay, sir, you should invest in stocks or mutual funds, or mostly they'll call you for a loan or a credit card? Loan and credit card. These are the two things <laughs> which exactly... And that's why True Caller gets them blocked. So I'll give an example of mine. I'll not name the bank. So I'm a bank user uh, from last 15, 20 years, uh, a same bank user. It's a digital one. Every month, I'll receive a call from the relationship manager telling me that, okay, sir, you have new offers. And whenever I ask new offers, there are only loans and credit cards. 
they have all my behavior history they see that i'm a passive investor i invest in mutual funds i'll buy stocks sometimes but not invest in them again for next 2 3 years by looking at this they know that i should be pitched a different kind of product but the only thing they pitch to me is this then the other problem that i feel even when i say no no i am not interested and not going to be interested they will never block my number there so someone else will call me from the same bank and pitch, pitching me the loans again so if we are stuck in that way of just pitching one product why we are doing this because we we do not have we do not ever map ideal customer profiles we do not ever map see behavioral things of people so that's one thing which i feel is completely missing in uh, where our cx teams need help so so i'll ask you an honest question again so jayesh will open up the poll do you feel really honestly has your company nailed out the ideal customer profile that you can very well say okay yes uh, this is my ideal customer profile and i've seen companies who have nailed it and they have been growing like crazy because they know they have figured out their niche and when it comes to feedback or when it comes to anything the first thing that they see is is my ideal customer profile asking for this so the people there are some people who are saying yes i would definitely like to talk to you how you guys nailed this out okay let's end the poll jaish would you like to share the results yeah so around 31% said they have nailed it and around 69% said they haven't so the people who have said yes i would like to ask you a question does this help in prioritization when it comes to the feedback that you receive you can answer that in the chat we also have a question from uh, gorav that most of the business across us and europe have their data privacy policies and compliances Mm-hmm. like ccpa gdpr cx tools right. to follow them uh, proactively making pii's and ensuring the privacy how do you feel the effectiveness of such processes in india i think that is uh, for sure coming up so what we have seen uh, so sorry sometimes i have to give an example of our own customers so um, when it comes to surveys Uh, when we are working with banking now so one of the banks in indonesia we worked with like 5 years ago asked us that okay i do not want to share the pii information with you when it comes to sharing service but i still want to know who that customer is without you knowing a pii information so so what we uh, did we created a, a feature called unique links where uh, now the banks just share us a random customer id to us um using the api and we send a unique link back to their crm and they distribute the service on their own now doing this you never have the pii information coming to a system like us service center so this is one thing people are protecting the other things that i've seen i was just talking yesterday to an airline company that we work with and they had like uh, a very good consultant that they have kept for uh, Uh, the thing so when, whenever we talk about that we won't take you your the pii they are happy with it but they still feel that even some of our cloud services that we have uh, we need to be more careful around that so mm-hmm. we need to do vapt testing when we are deploying our products every 15 days we'll have to uh, do the automated vapt analysis and things like this so i f- feel that when it comes to banking when it comes to retail uh, there the think about people are thinking about data privacy because in india anything can happen and that's why i think paytm and all became so successful because the teams have at least put in a lot of effort in making sure that data privacy is there so uh, i think there are some more questions uh nikhil has uh, replied to what you asked that uh, it's at, like the customer profiling okay separately does when our ideal profile provides feedback we know what to prioritize example talks about pricing versus someone else comments on it because everyone has <laughs> absolutely right nikhil okay so let's move on to the next example we have is something we work 
with a company and uh, they how profiling actually help them jaish you want to take this up yeah so uh, just to help you out understand how exactly profiling works and how exactly it helps you in terms of market yourself as well right so we work with the auto brand where uh, you know we had a lot of interaction so one particular car what they actually came up with that sales was you know even after marketing that car the sales was not prominent in terms of understanding that uh, you know why people are not buying it right or even if i'm marketing it there are a lot of people who aren't actually coming down in terms of test drive or even if they are doing the test drive the purchase is not happening right so what we did was all those people who bought the car we actually took a feedback post 3 months in terms of understanding what was the reason of buying right so what we heard was that uh, it was majorly parents who were actually uh, you know buying that car for their kids which was their first car so it 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 already had a emotional angle from the parent side and the child side that this is my first car because uh, you know across the globe if you will see there are a lot of people who get attached to their first purchase in terms of vehicles right so that's where we help the client out in terms of understanding how they market it right so they created an advertisement in that particular around where exactly they targeted those people making them understand that why this car is your child's first or it should be your child's first car and that actually helped them out in terms of you know increasing the sales right so that's where i would say you know understanding the customer profile understanding the product and where exactly i need to segment it right what segment of people actually will buy my product is something which you know we help them out and this is very important for the other people as well right to understand so any kind of a product so even if i say if you've seen uh, you know uh, there are a lot of startups coming in right so uh, there's this startup for which manufactures apple cider vinegar tablets right so they've marketed that thing pretty well they they've brought in influencers they've marketed it in a manner where exactly uh, you know people are actually buying it seeing it everywhere uh, you know seeing the results the testimonies they are they are actually putting out testimonies of people over there so that really helps in terms of understanding your segment absolutely i think this is something that people should do as well i feel uh, yeah. understanding who are the people who actually bought you uh, absolutely yeah if they get to know it's it's easier for them to market yeah so yeah go ahead jesh so uh, you know the second challenge what we've uh, seen people going through is the tech integrations right because that is very much important there, there was uh, someone in the chat who actually put down automation right to automate everything just to make everything real time we need to integrate with your systems just to make sure that every transaction or every process which is happening or every brand interaction from the customer side which is happening is getting covered in terms of making sure a real real time feedback is getting triggered what i felt is uh, you know there are a lot of organizations who have data scattered right one system is storing something else the other system is storing something else and uh, then marrying that data together is very difficult correct right so even for a partner like us or anyone who wants to help you out in terms of capturing a feedback bringing that segmentation down bringing that uh, you know uh, i would say the deep dive down in terms of understanding right what the customer is saying or even if i say to map the journey just to give you an example that uh, recently i i went to a retail store so i bought a couple of things online right but i went to the retail store and uh, they took my number and they really congratulated me for being a first millionaire you know, first time buyer for that brand right so though i have been buying from them for the past 6 months on a digital front like on their website right but i was pretty shocked that you know their store data and their digital data is pretty, pretty much separate they don't know that this person has already been buying from us you know so the mapping the customer journey if i say right in terms of whether it's a retail buy whether it's a website buy that is also important because you don't know how exactly my customer will uh, interact and you are right, right. so the, the website people uh, so there are different teams in the company itself one is Absolutely. the website part and the other happening is the retail part and they don't know whether customer who purchase on the website has they purchased on the uh, store as well absolutely nailed on jaish the example right so how is so just just uh, you know uh, pun intended over here so how do people expect us to marry the data it's right. impossible marrying that yeah. data will be very difficult over here yeah so right. i think Until the, the tech time... team the ctos the tech teams uh, 
uh, I know they they have been busy. Our CTO is always busy <laughs> as well, but they have to somehow understand that the CX teams are also trying to just um, improve uh, what what the company should do. And um, the better they do, the better loyalty they have, the better business they'll get. So I think correct. Shivanshu here just nailed yeah. it as well. Shivanshu here nailed it as well. Worst mm -hmm. is giving your details on every Domino's outlet. They don't even. Have integrated, have integrated the offline them. stores and that's <laughs> absolutely correct that's absolutely correct you go there you give your number then you tell your name you tell your everything over there just to make sure you receive the bill online like on the sms exactly and with the number itself they should know everything right even the hospital absolutely have problem yeah absolutely so so this is something that is missing and because of this people are unable to prioritize action so i i, I had an example i was working with a loan company jayesh uh, last year and they they were they wanted to um, make the journey level measurement measurement in real time like right after onboarding right after the loan disbursement and everything but their uh, segment in the segmentation data was lying there somewhere in the it data lake and it was taking 15 to 30 days to get that data back and upload in our feedback system again then they will look at the analysis and do some action on it so already a month late things are going were going See, I, now i'll give you yeah. One more example over here. Hmm. So what exactly happens is that, you know, to map the hierarchy altogether, right? Well, even if, if I say, for example, any company where, uh, you know, any retail brand or any, uh, I would say a hospitality brand, there's a lot of, uh, you know, attrition happening over there. Correct. Right. So if you've done the hierarchy mapping, if we don't get the data pushed from the client side in terms of making sure that those dashboards, which are there, right, which, uh, you know, a, a, I would say a store manager or anyone is saying, right? If if that data is not that employee data is not getting pushed regularly, we won't mm -hmm. be able to update it. So that's where if you'll see Absolutely. a lot of wo uh, dated do do teen teen mahina lag jata hai just to make sure that you know we come up with the new hierarchy. Correct. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is also a pretty big problem because if you want that thing to be uh, you know real time or automated, so automatically an integration should happen where uh, you know the employee data is automatically changing. Correct. So I think CTOs and the tech team needs to help the CX teams a lot in terms of this. Case. Yeah. Yeah. Then this is one of the third challenge. Yeah. Guys, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, uh, I, I say this thing to everyone. So the most dangerous people. So we hear from negative people. You know, we know who's positive is positive, but there are a lot of people who are passive and there are a lot of people who don't reply. Right. So if I send the survey to 100 people, if I've received 10 responses, so if there are negative people, you know, they, they basically, uh, you know, either they tell it to their friends, right, they won't go online. So just to give you an example, like, you know, uh, I went for a car service, I didn't like the service station, right. So I told it to my friends and family, ki yeah. I went there and the service was not that pretty great, right. But what I did was, again, raise a query request as well that the servicing didn't happen pretty well. There are a lot of people who go to Twitter. Correct. Right. There are a lot of people who respond to the survey. They might give a negative feedback. They might, um, you know, I would say, whether it's a positive, negative, any kind of feedback, right? They'll, uh, you know, talk in terms of their peers. There are a lot of people who, uh, you know, praise you as well. But Correct. all those people who haven't replied to me, how would I actually, uh, you know, try to understand them? If, if there are 90% of the people who haven't replied, so I need to understand their behavior, purchase behavior, or or I would say, uh, you know, their service behavior. If if anyone who's coming down to me on a regular basis to get the car serviced, right? Or for example, if I say, uh, you know, very good example, what has happened to me as well, or I've seen it happening to other people, or I would say this should regularly happen. So if, for example, a lady who enters a showroom, right, at uh, in a weekday, hmm. two two thirty and buys a you know product for like three to zero to three months of a baby right for example i went to me and mommy or any kind of a uh, you know a, a retail store where exactly mm -hmm. i've purchased a product so i can very well understand so there are two profiles over here there might be a possibility it's a new mom correct right there might be a possibility that uh, you know a housewife or or someone a, a lady who has come down and bought a product for someone who's a newborn in their family Hmm. Right. So what I can do is one month down the line, I can start marketing my those products, which are three to six months of products for a baby. Correct. Hmm. Right. But for so that, this, we need to have the capability. Actually, 
yeah so to understand kind of so, analytics. Yeah, yeah so all we need to have is because see um, you know companies don't prefer giving us the business data correct right so it is difficult for us to analyze it so they can have those um, you know data analysts doing that thing for them in house data analysts who can analyze these purchase behaviors correct right who can analyze that um, you know these are kind of behaviors which exactly this person is doing one more example so if for example a person who's coming down to a store buying a white shirt regularly hmm right every 3 months or every 6 months i can see that for the past 2 years this person has bought a white shirt right right or i would say solidity solid shirts so might be a possibility the person who's buying a white shirt is a lawyer or right. a sales might person, be a possibility or a sales person <laughs> or any kind of a thing or Correct. anyone who's wearing you know buying a lot of formals belongs to uh, you know an industry where formals are actually pretty prominent they need to wear regularly correct right so if i have a new suit line i can very well advertise to them i can very well put down advertisements to them i can put down messages that we have a new suit line and if you're interested uh, you know you can very well look at the website or you can come down Correct. to the store so Correct. this is how you know we need to understand the purchase behavior of a customer we need to understand right. how exactly they are actually uh, you know coming down to me on a regular basis and even if i say if someone who has bought three quarters from me and the fourth quarter they didn't come right so that means that person is a churn for me yeah so right. i need, there I need to push it, yeah. so i'll i'll have to do yeah. both kind of these analysis whether absolutely people have stopped buying and if what are the people the things that people are buying so that we can create those models and uh, start pushing them different kind of marketing campaigns and absolutely this is what, this is what the th- third challenge jay uh, you nailed it uh, came through that people uh, in the cx teams they have research capability they know how to do surveys how to do those analysis but they do not have this advanced analytics capability within them so not every one person can do everything right a person cannot do sales Absolutely. marketing product at the same time so they also need this kind of a help that they should hire these data scientists or data analytics people who can help them do these behaviors because that is the only way then they'll be able to prove the roi of what cx is doing so it's not just Correct. about surveys it's also about doing these kind of analysis so that you can help increase sales because after all to everyone if i talk about in the board what matters the most jayesh it's always the money <laughs> absolutely see everything is revenue driven every every single aspect what a brand is doing is basically to generate revenue right exactly so if if we aren't you know uh, linking those revenue matrices with respect to these feedbacks this respect to um, you know all these analysis which i'm doing then that's basically a fault exactly so so now let's uh, move on to the next one where we see how cx champions differentiate so i have an example here as well so this is another uh, an nbfc company a loan company that we work with they so guys they had a very high nps above 70 actually uh, but their overall growth was still slow so mm-hmm. so we we understood that uh, uh, the ceo one, one one day ceo asked us that okay we have a high nps so there's not n- really anything we can do about it then how can we actually increase our sales so what we ask them that can you let us know that how many people actually who come uh, to take a loan from you uh, and they end up taking a loan so so we ask them that in during these two stages like the loan application where aadhar gets verified to a loan approval how many people actually drop off and they mentioned there is around 72% drop off so they they try to sell um, the loans via phone to the people who have already taken a loan from them before so the, out of 100 people 72 were dropping off consistently so only 28 were actually becoming the customers and all those customers those 28 had a very very high nps because they were happy with the company so now we try to ask them okay can you give us the list of these people who have dropped off and we'll do a drop off survey this is a survey we did via phone rather than a digital channel mm. uh, trying to understand that what are the reasons people dropped off so the key issues that were identified that uh, people needed an app but they were not aware that was there was an app for that company where mm. they can put on their old documents and everything and the second thing was loan amount offered was not enough so most of the selling jaish was happening through that telecall system so the telecallers were pushing the people that after they have identity uh, loan application is filed the aadhar verified they pushing the people to put in the documents right away on that call taking up 45 mm. minutes to 1 hour to finish everything but 
people what people or the customers were asking okay give us an app we will do it later we'll do it later why we have to just do it everything right now we are not trusting that process so once what what they did once we told the, uh, the company about this they uh, went and look at their sales team and try to understand why people are not uh, pushing the app so what one was they figured out that the tele sales people were not pushing the app because they were not getting incentivized when they were pushing the app they were only incentivized when they are finishing the call or uploading all the documents and everything and the person gets the loan on the phone itself and this was leading to more than 18% drop off the other thing that was happening the people were asking for more loan amount but they were not able to give it so the actions taken after they realized this was um uh, there was some app awareness then and there was a small incentive given to the tele sales people who will push the app and suddenly after i think 6 months of this once this was actually launched there was around 18% reduction in drop offs which helped them increase the overall revenue to 5% and now we have apps we have on the websites people reach out but how many people actually do a drop off survey to understand why people are losing it so that is also something that champions have started doing and which we are missing so i'll ask another question to everyone uh how many of you have done a drop off or a churn survey before to get to know why people are getting uh, lost and you have done any actions on it that's a good number it's kind of like a 50 50 yeah it's almost 50 50 so let's end the poll and share results so so good to see that uh, around 50% of the people are st- have started actually doing, doing it yeah yeah and there are 52 uh, absolutely over there and there are 50% of the people are still not doing it and this is something that you should look after because this will help you get closer to what the cx roi we were talking about uh, mm-hmm. just doing a survey via phone call to understand why people dropped off let's suppose you are working in a uh, company which has app Uh, app for example a mutual fund or a stock company or any other thing people give all the details give the phone number and never actually buy it never actually do anything on it then try to figure out what is the reason of not doing it by doing a drop off survey so there is something nikhil had mentioned we connect exit surveys on various websites to understand no one really wants to elaborate so we can also uh, provide drop down reason top reason this allows in customized engagement to convert them into purchases absolutely and nikhil what mm. is i would suggest if you have their numbers just in case uh, i'm i'm not sure on the website one will you have but in any case if you have their numbers this is the survey only maybe 100 150 people in one quarter just try to get them on the phone and they'll answer you better and whatever call center guy that you use to call them should be a person who should be good in uh, asking questions that way so it's something that can work on the website it will be difficult for people to answer they just close it and run away okay so uh, how one last example that will take um, how another way of cx champions prove roi so there is a mutual fund company that we work with so their business model was app driven mutual fund investments and their customers were divided into segments like platinum gold and silver platinum meaning the ones who can like have a great buying capacity so we did a survey with them um, and we tried to understand like uh, how this was more of a relationship npa survey so what we identified as a key issue that the platinum segment say, said that even though we have the money you have the app but there's no personal guidance on what to buy so that company this is from indonesia so that company th- uh, launched a three months campaign um, by getting this answer that Uh, we can assign rm to some of the platinum customers uh, who will call them maybe once in 15 days and ask them okay how the things are going these are the new inv- uh, funds that you can invest in and things like this and a pact- actual rm who knows about business so within the second week uh, from that campaign one customer spent around 
literally in dollars 125k dollars on funds so once they did this they, they did it for three months the, the roi was so huge that now the company actually started doing this for the gold segment as well how we can convert gold to platinum making more rm so this is how a cx initiative can actually be linked to uh, business kpis so before we uh, jump into the last section any questions anyone if you have i'll please... also run if we are just three minutes left tanuj so what okay. i'll do is i'll run a poll the last poll if anyone is looking for any similar services do let us know i am launching the poll if you are interested click yes we'll reach out to you on that then so we are a customer feedback company that makes sure that the roi gets achieved if you feel you are actively looking for something you are thinking about it you can say uh, yes and if no then it's totally okay we'll see you on the next webinar for the people who said yes someone from our team will reach out to you uh, just in case if there is a use case we can help with and if you do are not looking for something like this just say no that's okay Okay. Thank you so much. I think we have the Thank answer. Thank you. I'll end the poll now. Yeah. Okay. So let's jump to the last topic. If we talk about the key actionables, which will get you uh, slightly closer to the board seat, is invest in gathering customer profile, their preferences. Uh, talk to the tech team. Get closer to them. Go on a coffee or a drinks break with them, and make sure they help you out when you need those kind of data because IT is the only one that can help you with that. and then have you invest in a uh, skills like people maybe if you can learn it it will be slightly difficult but if you can have some data analytics help within you who can do this behavior analysis predictive analysis on your transactional data that will help you a lot and will get you closer to the roi of cx which every ceo needs or a cmo needs so it's something that can absolutely get you closer to the uh, both seat so that's the only thing guys we wanted to share if you have any questions about this webinar uh, this presentation let us know uh, there will also be a feedback form that comes in as soon as you'll close this uh, webinar so please help us out with giving your honest feedback and also give a suggestion on what we can do in the next webinar for you so uh, thank you so much everyone for joining